Once upon a time, there lived a poor widow, and she had a son, Jack, and a cow, Belianka. The cow gave milk every morning, and the mother and son sold it in the bazaar, and that was how they lived. But once Belianka did not give milk, and they did not have food. Mom decided to sell the cow and open a shop with the proceeds. Jack took the rein in his hands and led the cow to the market. No sooner had he arrived than he met some wonderful old man. He said he would like to trade Jack's cow for beans. And with these words, he took out a handful of some strange beans from his pocket. The old man said these beans are magical. They need to be planted in the evening, and by morning they will grow to the very sky. Jack became very interested and agreed. The boy came home early. Mother was very angry that he gave the dairy cow in the whole neighborhood for a handful of some nasty beans. But Jack remembered the old man's words and decided that there was nothing to do, and planted beans in the yard. He went up to his attic sad, sad, and fell asleep. In the morning, Jack woke up and saw something like a large tree in the yard. And this, it turns out, his beans sprouted, and the huge stem continued to grow upward until it grew to the sky. Jack jumped onto the stem and climbed up like a ladder. He climbed and climbed and climbed and climbed until, at last, he reached the sky. There he saw a long and wide road that led him to a huge castle. Jack went to his gate and knocked. The gate opened and a tall woman stood on the threshold. Stuttering with fear, the boy asked for something for breakfast. The giantess let him in but warned him not to catch the eye of her husband because he is a cannibal. She took Jack to the kitchen. But before he had time to eat even half of his breakfast, suddenly the whole house shook from someone's steps. The boy was not taken aback and instantly jumped into the furnace. And at that very moment, the cannibal entered the room. Well, he was as big as a mountain. The cannibal took out two bags of gold from a huge chest and sat down to count the coins. He counted and counted, finally began to nod off and began to snore. Then Jack quietly climbed out of the oven, crept past the cannibal, grabbed one bag of gold and rushed to the beanstalk. He threw the bag down and he began to go down the stem lower and lower until, finally, he found himself at his house. Jack told his mother everything that had happened to him and handed her a bag of gold. They began to live on the money that was in the bag. But eventually the sack was empty and Jack decided to try his luck one more time at the top of the beanstalk. One fine morning, he got up early and climbed a beanstalk. The man-eater's wife stood at the threshold of the huge castle. She said that she would not let him in, because the last time her husband had lost a bag of gold. But all the same, she took pity on the poor boy and led him into the castle. Suddenly the footsteps of a giant were heard and Jack again hid in the furnace. The cannibal entered and told his wife to bring the hen that lays the golden eggs. The giantess brought it and the ogre ordered the chicken to lay. And she laid the golden egg. The pleased giant began nodding and snoring. Then Jack climbed out of the oven, grabbed the golden chicken and rushed to the beanstalk. The boy returned home. He showed his mother a wonderful chicken, and they began to live selling golden eggs. But soon it seemed to Jack that this was not enough. And he again decided to try his luck at the top of the beanstalk. This time the boy climbed into the castle through the window. He jumped into a copper cauldron and hid. The cannibal and his wife entered the room. The giant smelled the boy, and they rushed to look for him in the oven. But he was not there. They searched every nook and cranny, but they didn't think to look into the copper cauldron. Desperate to search, the ogre ordered his wife to bring a golden harp and put it on the table. Under her beautiful sounds, the cannibal snored. Then Jack quietly climbed out of the cauldron, grabbed the golden harp and rushed to the door. But the harp played loudly and woke the cannibal. 
Jack ran at breakneck speed, leaping onto a beanstalk, and the giant in pursuit. Jack went down to his house, and yelled at his mother to carry the axe. The mother ran out with an axe in her hands, the boy grabbed the axe, and began to chop the beanstalk. The ogre felt the stem swing violently and stopped. Then Jack struck again with an axe and cut the beanstalk. It swayed and collapsed, and the ogre fell to the ground and crashed. From that day on, Jack and his mother never knew poverty again. But the boy was very sorry that, because of their greed, they almost paid with their lives. He promised that he would never steal again, and would work hard for the good of the family. Once upon a time there was a wealthy merchant who had three daughters. The youngest of the daughters was called Beauty. The sisters did not like her because she was everyone's favorite. One day the father was going to go to the city and asked his daughters what to bring as a gift. The older sisters asked for precious dresses and adornments, and the youngest asked for a scarlet rose, the most beautiful in the world. The merchant became thoughtful, but okay. promised that he would do everything possible to find such a flower. And hit the road. The father quickly found gifts for the eldest daughters, but for the youngest he could not find them. Each rose that the merchant met on his way was more beautiful than the previous one. Wherever he was looking. And then the road led him into a dense forest. It was very dark and cold there. Suddenly lights appeared in the distance. Approaching, the merchant saw a huge ancient castle, all in gold and diamonds. Entering its gate, he entered a hall full of jewels. He saw that there was a table in the middle of the hall, and there were no dishes on it, and all the dishes were made of silver and gold. But the castle was empty, there was no one. The merchant thought that the owner would probably come any minute. He waited an hour, two, three, no one showed up. The merchant could not resist and sat down at the table. Having eaten from the belly, the old man hit the road. Driving along the alley, the merchant saw a rose bush of unprecedented beauty and remembered the request of his youngest daughter. He drove up and picked the most beautiful rose. At the same moment, lightning flashed, thunder struck, there was a roar, and rose, as if out of the ground, in front of the merchant, and not a beast or a man, but some kind of monster, terrible and furry. It was too angry that the merchant picked his favorite flower instead of thanking the owner for his hospitality. The old man was very frightened and said that he would do anything as long as he did not kill him. For such an offense, the beast agreed to marry one of his daughters. But only the one who wants to come herself, out of love for her father. And if none comes, then death to the merchant. The old man was grieving and decided to go home to say goodbye to his daughters. He did not want to give up any of them for a fierce beast. I got on my horse and went home. Having met the children, he gave gifts to everyone and told about his adventures. The older sisters pounced on the younger, they say, it was her fault she ordered a lousy flower, for which the father now has to pay with his life. To which Beauty replied that she would gladly go to the beast instead of her father. And so, the next day, Beauty hit the road. The horse quickly found its way back to the castle. Entering the hall, she found a table with exquisite wines and food. Beauty thought that the beast wanted to eat her, so she feeds her. As soon as she had dinner, there was a roar, and a terrible and hairy monster appeared, as if from under the ground. And the beast said to Beauty that since she herself came here of her own free will, it means that she has a good heart. And so the monster will also be kind to her. And with these words, the beast disappeared. Waking up in the morning, Beauty decided to take a walk entering one of the rooms, she saw an inscription on the table, whatever the beauty wishes, I will do. The girl thought that after all the monster is kind and probably he is not going to eat it. 
So they lived for a long time the beast treated Beauty very well, and fulfilled all her desires. One day the girl dreamed that her father was sick. She really wanted to visit him. The beauty tearfully asked the beast to let her go and promised that she would definitely come back. The monster replied that she was free and could return whenever she wanted. The next day, beauty put on her most expensive clothes and went to her father. He was very happy to see his daughter safe and sound. Her sisters came running and saw that she had become even more beautiful and even dressed like a queen. A week later, Beauty had a dream that the beast was lying on the grass in the park and dying. She woke up in horror and decided to urgently return and cure him. When the girl approached the castle, she saw the lifeless body of the beast on the grass. Her heart was breaking with pity. The Beauty rushed to him with tears and kissed him. And at the same moment lightning flashed, thunder struck, the whole castle was lit up with a bright light, and music played everywhere. The monster disappeared, and in its place the most charming prince lay on the grass. He told Beauty that this evil fairy had bewitched him and turned him into a monster, until a young beautiful girl fell in love with him and wanted to get married. The Beauty gave him her hand, and they went to the castle. The next day, Beauty and the Prince got married and healed happily ever after. This is how a good heart can break an evil spell.